this is what we are doing. We're helping our people come out of the graves that they've been buried in for over 500 years in this country. It's time for us to wake up and realize that we are the greatest people on the planet. God said what? What's your name? Tim. Tim. Tim, how you doing? What's your name, sis? Tierra. Tierra, come here. Come here, Tierra. Give me Job chapter 33 and verse 15. I want to show you something. Because Job went through a lot in the Bible, right? Hey, yeah, a lot of people couldn't have went through what Job went through. That's what I'm telling my boy. I've been through persecution since two years old. I'm 31. Guess what? You've been in persecution for over 500 years. That's right. Because look, but listen, your, your own persecution is your is your entire nation's persecution. When they persecute one of us, they persecute all of us. So just because your, it may be your own personal trial, like you got something you going through, you dealing with, you got something going through, you dealing with, it ain't the same thing. But because of the condition of our people, we're still dealing with an overall uh, oppression that's happened to us as a nation. So I heard you say that you took the day off, and I want you to listen. You take the day off because you wanted to. It was just, you just had, had to take the day off for some reason, right? You are tired. But I'm going to show you something. Have you ever heard this Bible written or heard this Bible spoken and read how it's being read today? Has, has, it, has the understanding ever been told to you out of the Bible like it's being told right now? And we thank you. All praises. I'm sitting, I'm sitting my All praises. Was well, what was I doing before we just came up here? What y'all doing? We, we was doing this since yesterday. Yeah. We Good. Doing this so I'm a, we got here. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how God works. I'm gonna show you how God works. Yeah, go. I'm gonna show you exactly how He works. Because get first, hold, hold Job 33, 14. Give me that uh, spirit bear witness. Romans 8, 16, right? Me Romans 8 and 16, because if you're already digging into your history, you're already digging into uh, brothers that are teaching and trying to make, your, make you aware of who you are, then obviously there's something in your spirit that the Lord is dealing with. Read this real quick. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit itself bears witness. So there's a spirit in the both of you that bear witness to the fact that we're going through something. We're struggling. We need, why, why is this only happening to us? There's something in your spirit that's stirring you up to start to want to look for more information, mm -hmm. desiring more of what is truth and right on this earth so that we can change our condition, so that you can change your own personal condition, right? Read it again. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So your spirit is starting to bear witness with the fact that you're going through oppression. That's the spirit of God dealing with you because it's God's chosen people in the Bible on the earth today here in America, in Columbia, South Carolina, right here on Broad Street and across the world that are suffering oppression. That's We're right. going through oppression. Why is this happening to us? Why is that? I've been to eight different cities over the last eight different weeks. And you know what I see in every city? The same thing. It's the same thing all over the earth. But here's what I want you to understand. Don't take a little bit and, and, and try to go figure it out. You ain't got to figure it out because you're looking at brothers. We ain't got it all together either. But we got on these, and we, we're all in one mind and one spirit for a reason. We got on the same outfit for a reason. 
you have the same spirit that is now starting to bear witness and bear uh, truth to your spirit. Now give me that in Job chapter 33 and verse 14. Read this. Job chapter 33 verse 14. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. So the Bible is hearing Job, uh, uh, a parable is being put forth. It says God speaketh once, yea, twice. He may speak, he ain't going to come and say, hey Tim, go down the broad river road and you're going to see guys in purple. I want you to stand there. Nah, your, your spirit, you might get a flyer. You might get somebody that say something and it triggers something in your mind. That's the spirit of the Lord coming through somebody to deal with you. Read it again. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. It says God speaketh once. God will even speak to you twice, but he ain't finna whisper in your ear. He might send you a message through a flyer, an individual. Read on. Yet man perceiveth it not. Yet man don't perceive when God is speaking to him. Read. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men. So, the Bible is saying, when we go to sleep at night, we go to sleep and we probably done pre-planned our day for the next tomorrow. I'm going to do this. Tomorrow I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this, that, that, and the third. But God said, read that part again. Then he openeth the ears of men. Read that precept from the top, that part. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet men perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night. So you in a, you in a dream, in the vision of the night, you're sleeping on your bed, right? When deep sleep. Falleth upon men. You snoring. You out. Cold. You already made your plans and what you're going to do for the next day, right? And slumberings upon the bed. Uh -huh. Then he opened the ears of men. So the Bible is saying when you go to sleep, the Most High opened up your, opened up the ears of men. He opened up their understanding. He goes within your mind. You sleep. But the Most High is dealing with your mind while you sleep, right? And sealeth their instruction. He does what? Sealeth their instruction. So God, while you're sleeping on your bed, He's dealing with your spirit, trying to wake you up. Now you sleep. When you go to sleep, the Most High is dealing with your mind. He seals the instruction that He wants you to do. Read that He may withdraw men from His purpose. So He does that to withdraw you from your own purpose. Like you say, I took the day off. No, the Lord put it in your spirit. For you to take the day off. Right. Read. And hide pride from men. He did that so that he could get you right here today. You took the day off in the spirit of the Lord so that you could be standing right here today. But I'm going to show you something. Read it from the top again. For God speaketh once. God speaketh once. He's speaking once to you. Yea, twice. He even speaking twice to you. You don't have this brother deal with you. You don't have this brother and myself. And God's speaking to you now. So you can't just say, all right, I got a little bit. I know a little bit. Let me let me rush off because if I said, "What's today?" What would you say? What is what's God's day? It's the Sabbath day. What can and can't you do on the Sabbath day? What are you supposed to do on the Sabbath day? Give me Hebrews ten twenty five. Rest. Right. Congregate. Yes. Get with brethren of like minded. Right. You should be trying to get you, you. You shouldn't be on that side. You should be at four o'clock. You should be headed to the school where these brothers that you're already watching are congregating together. Yeah, we got right. a school right down the street. Read Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty-five. Yeah. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. So now you know you're an Israelite. Do you understand that? You know you're an Israelite. You, do you understand that you're an Israelite? So when somebody asks you what's your nationality? Moving forward, you shouldn't say that you're what? Black. You're not You're not African American. It's the color of his shirt. It's the color of his shirt. Yeah, that his shirt black. He ain't black. His skin is brown. But now that you know that you're an Israelite, read this again. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. We can't forsake the assembly of ourselves together. Once the Lord starts dealing with our minds, once we start to bear record with this Bible and our spirit lines up with what's going on in the scriptures, we now got to say, you know what? I need to find brothers and sisters who think just like this. I need to find brothers and sisters who are trying to keep God's commandments just like this. I can't go back to what I used to be. For me to notice and to go back to what I what I know that I shouldn't be doing, that, 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 you're living a lie. 
From right. this day forward, you'll be living a lie if you say, you know what? I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. And that's that's the that's the fail safe in our mind. The fail safe in our mind is to be comfortable. It's to be is to be is to is to accept the condition of our of our people and ourselves and say, you know what? It's too hard to move forward. Moving forward requires work. Right. It requires you to get up, move. Right. It requires you to get out and build relationships. Right. But our people, we tend to fall back into that that, that, mm -hmm. that safe, that fail safe zone and not do nothing. We cannot forsake the assembly of the body. That's because right. it's, give me Zephaniah. Give me that in Zephaniah, chapter two. Because in joining together, in you getting your mind right, you getting your mind right, repenting, guess what your family members are going to see? Damn, Tim, something different about Tim. Tim got, Tim got something else going on. Tim, what's happening? What you got going on? Now you get to do what? You get to impart to them the truth of the Bible. You get to help them wake up in their minds and resurrect more people. Because when you wake somebody up, that person is going to go wake somebody else up. Somebody going to wake somebody else up. That's how we were destroyed. First, they brought our forefathers here. They destroyed them. They had children. They further destroyed them. The reason we're in the condition right now is because we're suffering oppression that has happened to us from generations ago. We are the generation of the slave trade. When you look at these images that's down here on the ground, you're looking at images of our people when we were, this, this is how they broke us. This is how they destroyed us. This is how we lost our nationality. Now we're understanding that this is, that we accept the fact that this happened to us. God said that this would happen to us if we broke his commandments. So we broke the commandments of God. Therefore, God punished us. Like if you got children, you got children too? You got children? All praises. When you have some and they disobey you, what you going to do? You got to discipline them. This is God's discipline against his children. But I want, to, I want you to hear this. Read what you got. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. What did God say? Gather yourselves together. Go to Deuteronomy. Hold that. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now, Israel. It says, and now, Israel. What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of thee? Go back. What does God require of thee? Gather yourselves together. God said what? Gather yourselves together. God says in Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12, what do what does the Lord thy God require of thee? What does God require of us once we learn that, oh, I ain't a nigga? I ain't a speak, I ain't a coon? I'm not African American? I'm an Israelite according to God? I'm God's chosen son and daughter? Once we realize this, brother, how you doing? In that what's your, what's your name? Erlen? How you doing, Erlen? What's so once we you, you understand what the brother gave you is a flyer that tells you what your nationality is. We're the Israelites. Once we learn that we're the Israelites, God said what? Gather yourselves together. He says, gather yourselves together. A hand, my fingers together, I can't smack the hell out of you like this. But if I ball this fist up and hit you with it, it's going to be a whole lot more powerful. God says what? Gather yourselves together. God says become one mind. Become one unit. Become one fist. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together. O nation, not desire. We're the only nation on the planet that's not desired amongst other nations. They getting out their little nice cars going in the rushes getting their chicken. They looking over here at us. Look at them niggas. Look at them niggas. What the hell are them niggas doing up under that tent? We're resurrecting our people. Yes, we're calling the minds of our people back to their God. Right. This is what we're doing. We're helping our people come out of the graves that they've been buried in for over 500 years in this country. Right. It's time for us to wake up and realize that we are the greatest people on the planet. God right. said what? Gather, gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together. A nation not desired. We're not desired as a people. Right. And in order for us to be that that, that 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 royal priesthood that God called us to be, we got to come together, bro. We got to come together. You can't sit at home and watch it on, online. You got to come to the school. All right? That's what you got to do. Hey, so we expect to see you. Well, we, hey, I know what this means. We'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm from the hood, too. I come straight out of the ghetto, too. You don't come out of the ghetto? 
Straight out of the ghetto, right? What's in the ghetto? You can put that down. What's in the ghetto? Poverty, murder, robbery, bloodshed of our own people at the hands of our own people. When when are we gonna come out of this? Are we not tired? We ain't tired yet? We tired, but what is the solution? So, if I asked you what's your nationality, what would you say? My nationality, I mean, yeah. obviously I would say American. Right, because that's what you've been taught, right? right exactly. you, ain't, you ain't been taught nothing else. But I know I'm, I'm not, but I'm saying. So when you look on this sign, where do you see yourself? <laughs> Judah, because you've been called an American black man since you've been born, right? But is American Judah in you? Do you believe in this Bible? You believe that there's a there's a heaven that the most high god is going to eventually allow us to enter you believe that so if we believe that and our people are going to church for for hundreds of years right in slavery we had the spirit to serve god right but where is our why was we taught our nationality and if our nationality is in the book what is it of, Exactly. You were put to death if you had if you if you tried to read. But now that we can read, now that we can write, how come we still don't know who we are? Give me Jeremiah chapter one verse fourteen. I'm gonna show you why. Because we're not taught to be able to go into this book and explain to anybody who we are. We're not taught to go into this book to be able to uh, 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 teach our children who they are. Read. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2 yeah. Judah morning So you say you come from this right you, you, you will be right here Judah right? It says what? Judah morning and the gates they have language The gates are talking about The places that we, we live at Like this this is the gates This is the opening of the gates where our people at Everywhere you, Anywhere you go down the street You look on the street there go our people Setting up uh Whatever that is A dog with clothes They about to sell clothes they're about to sell something on the other side. They say, Judah what? Judah morning. And the gates there are language. Our gates are languishing. Meaning they lack. What do they lack? The knowledge of who they are. Read. They are black unto the ground. They're black unto the ground. Now, who taught that Judah is, a, is, is the so-called black man? Well, the Bible calls Judah, Judah. America calls us the so-called black man. That's right. We're languishing because our leader, there's no leader set up to teach us. Right. Jesse Jackson can't teach us nothing. Right. What's the other fool name? Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton can't teach us nothing. Right. Every time somebody shot down in the street, the first thing they do is go get Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson to do what? To give a speech. So to calm, calm them niggas down. Go on all that. Go ahead, Jesse, you're on. Oh, white man just shot him down in the street. Call Jesse. Jesse, go calm them niggas down. Teach. Al, the, the, the niggas getting out of control. We need you to give them a good speech. And then our people get right up there and say, y'all forgive them. But I got a question. Did they for, have they forgiven uh 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 the the Iran or Iraq or the Arabians for 9-11? Did they forgive them? Hell no, America don't forgive nobody. America turn around and attack. They get revenge. Guess what? You're gonna get revenge too. That's right. You're gonna get revenge for what's been done to your people too. But you cannot do it on that side. On that side, breaking God's commandments, living in the midst of, uh, of sin in this world, you cannot have the revenge. You're gonna be a part of God's revenge. You gotta wake up, come on this side of the sign, and learn your nationality. All right? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My familia is the 12. That, but I, I want to ask you something. So you hear everything that's coming out. You agree. 
that you got to change. Some, something got. Uh, but they they don't listen. They don't read this. Read that in Amos chapter three again. I'm gonna show you why they don't listen. And I'm gonna show this brother right here too. Read that. Amos chapter three verse three. Can two walk together except they be agreed? The Bible is the Bible is plain. It says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, if I'm Muslim and you're an Israelite, can we walk together? Why? Because our doctrine is different. Like, brother, what's your name? Daniel. What is, what is it? Daniel. 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 Okay, Daniel, you got to write his name. What's your nationality? African. African? You see that? You would have said the same thing. But don't you don't you know that that's a white man? His name is Leo Scipio Africanus. He conquered Hannibal during the Second Punic War, and he changed the name of the continent to his last name, Africanus. Thus, we have the name Africa. It's named after a white man. America is named after Amerigo Vespucci, right. a white man. So when you say you're African American, you're saying that you come from the sperm of two white men. Is that possible? No, hell no, that ain't possible. We've been miseducated on all levels. So the Bible says, read that again. Can two work together except they be agreed? What's your religion? What religion do you follow? Christianity. Christianity. What religion do you follow? Christianity. Christianity. So the both of y'all in Christianity, all right? We understand what's taught in the Christian church, you know, believe on the blood of Jesus and he's going to save everybody, right? He's going he gonna, he gonna to save everybody. But is that in the Bible? That's not in the Bible. What's in the Bible is that Jesus Christ is going to save the Israelites, all right? So if you're a Christian and I'm an Israelite, can we walk together? So this is why when you tell people things, they're not, they don't follow because y'all haven't agreed in the same mind yet. The same mind has to be of the Bible, right? Step to the side real quick. When I, when I, when I, if I asked the both of you, if I said, who is this? What would you say? You would say who? What would you say? You would say Jesus, right? But I got a question. Is that in the Bible? What's in the Bible? Is the description of Christ in the Bible? It's not in there? How is it in there? Right, we're going to read it, but what, so why do we follow that? We was taught that. First I want, uh, what's that in Corinthians? Uh, preach another Jesus? 11 and 3? I want to show you this. Because this is important. This is what keeps us destroyed. This is why we don't want to follow nothing and we have so much disagreement when it comes to us as a people getting on the same page. Right. And I want to show you something before you before you take off. You got what I want? Sure. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. It says for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. Well who came? Who is the he that cometh? So when you read the Bible, it, it, in the church, they're not going to tell you and give you the understanding of the literal words of, of what's being read. They give you a feel-good feeling, shuck in a jive, and then you leave home, you don't know nothing. Man, I must say, I've been in the church all my life. Uh-huh. And I have read scripture and heard scripture read. And it's like, I, I'm looking at y'all reading this out of the Bible. Yes. And I've never heard it. You've never heard it. Right. Brother says he's looking at us reading this out of the Bible, and he's never heard this because... Right. I'm saying you never heard it taught correctly. Because when we go to church, we get the, and God said, huh, and the Lord this, and the Lord that. Can I get an amen? Pass the collection plate. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me deal with the brother. Read this again. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Why did he say that he that cometh? Meaning somebody is going to come and preach another Jesus. So who is the he that cometh? I'm going to show you. Give me hold that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. Say what? Which, which one? Which the Lord shall send against thee. The Bible says, now go hold that. I want you to hold that for the scriptures. Go back 
to that in first Corinthians. Remember in Deuteronomy just said, Behold, the Lord is gonna send them, He's gonna send them against us. He's going to read it again. Read Deuteronomy one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So it says, Therefore shall we serve our enemies. This is us right here, serving our enemies. Right? Did this happen? This is us right here serving our enemies. It says, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall sin against thee. Which what? Which the Lord shall sin against thee. It says, You're going to serve your enemies that the Lord is going to send against you. Now go back to 1 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians. Read that. Remember, who is God sending against the children of Israel? Read this again. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Yeah. For if he that cometh, for if he that cometh, who is the he that cometh? It was the white man. It was your, it, we call him the white man. The Bible says he's your enemy. That's you see what I'm saying? We call him the white man. The Bible says he's your enemy. That's now he says, so let's let, let's change the words up. Because I, first go back to Deuteronomy. I'm going to show you. I ain't, I ain't putting these words in, in the mouth. These words are coming out of the Bible. It's the understanding that we have not gotten. So read this again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Yeah. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. So God said, we're going to serve our enemies. He ain't say the white man. He said, you're going to serve. Because look, the Arabs did the same thing. Where's the other? Is the other, is another sign? So, it should be on here. You see this? This ain't the white man. This is the Arab man. The Arabs did the same exact thing. Right, right. We went into slavery under the Arabs first. Before we went into slavery under the white man. Right. They just came to an agreement back at that time that this was they was gonna do together. That's why they own the stores in your neighborhood. That's why, hey, the Arab, he owned the store on this side, the white man owned the store on this side. If you go all the way down Broad River, they're sharing sides of the of Broad River in our community when we are oppressed. Right. They're sharing in our oppression together, just like they did during this time. Right. But God didn't say the Arab man or the white man. What do you call them? Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. He says, therefore, you're going to serve your enemies, Leon. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. And God said, I'm going to send them against you. Now go back to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. For he that cometh, for if he that cometh, your enemy. For if he that cometh, your, your, it's your enemy that coming. Why? Because God sent them. For if he that, for if he that cometh, preacheth unto the Jesus. Wait a minute. For if he that cometh, preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. Whom the prophets Jeremiah didn't preach about this. Isaiah didn't preach about this. Nahum didn't preach about this. Right. Moses, none of the prophets of the Bible taught about Christ like this. Right. For if he that come and do what? Preacheth another Jesus, uh -huh. whom we have not preached. Uh -huh. For if you receive another spirit, what comes with this spirit right here? I'm going to show you what comes with this spirit under this new Jesus right here. Humbly, ha, 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 ha. Simata, tamata, simata. They got a whole other uh, uh, so called uh, language where they speak it in tongues. Simata, tamata, falling out on the church, falling out the mouth, throwing shit on you. That's a new spirit for he that cometh, preaching to another Jesus. And what? Or if ye receive another spirit, if you receive another spirit, what comes with the spirit? God loves everybody. The whole world can be saved. That ain't in the Bible. We are. Which ye have not received. Which the prophets did not receive, read. Or another gospel. Or another gospel. That, no, that other gospel is come as you are. You ever heard that in the church? All the time. Come as you are. Why? You come as you are, they give you a good, feel good speech, and then you leave as you are. They don't say, bro, you know you're in the midst of sin. Right. They don't say, brother, you, you, you're suffering from sin right now. Right, right. Want me to show you a sin right now? I'm going to pause that, and I'm going to show you what they're not going to teach you. Give it that in Corinthians. Yeah. First Corinthians. I'm going to show you something. And we don't see if the Lord dealing. The, all, all, obviously, the Lord dealing with you because you're still standing here. Obviously, the Lord dealing with you because you're still standing here. So we go to truth. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who's the head of every man? Christ is the head of every man. You agree? Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. If you're married, you are the head of your wife. Come on. And the head of Christ is God. The head of the of Christ is his father, God. So that shows you they ain't the same. They can't be the same if he's if God is over Christ. 
But in the church, they say there's one spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that's one. That ain't in the Bible. Right here, we read in the order that God is laying forth. Laying no. forth is God, his son Christ, then man whom he made in his image, and then woman and then children. For, come on. Every man bring or prophesy. We are prophesying right now. You're standing in the midst of prophecy. Do you agree? Read. Having his head covered. Having what? Having his head covered. Uh -huh. This honor his head. Do you got a do, is your head covered? Yes. Who's your head? Who's your head? Who is your head? Christ is your head. Read that again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor his head. Is your head covered? Who do you dishonor? Who do, who, just be real. That's what this is for. I was in the midst of the same thing. All these brothers, and we might be standing over here preaching to you right now, but we was in the midst of the same thing. So look, for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to have your head covered. Okay. You, so you knew I was about to read that. I didn't know that, but I don't know why. But your, your spirit bear witness that that's what I was about to do. I don't know why, but I said, he's going to say something about this. Yep. So what you supposed to do? All right. God is like, God, the angels, Christ, they're sitting around right now like, what you going to do? Huh? Why? Because you're bald? No, no, because I'm bald. You got your waves on? No, I don't have no waves. I would. I have uh, allergies, and so I have rashes. Okay. So I, 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 can, I can understand that. I can, I can understand that. But moving forward, you understand that if you go through scriptures, you should not have your head covered. All right, now go back to that in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11. Because remember, we're talking about this dang old demon that's been pushed all over the earth, right? Read that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Yeah. For he that cometh, preaches another Jesus. He that cometh is your enemy. They came, they taught a whole other Jesus in the Bible. Because that ain't in the Bible, right? You agree? That's not in there. We're going to see what's in there. Read. Whom we have not preached. Or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with them. Meaning we must contend for the faith. Because that ain't Christ. Now let's see what is in the Bible. What, what does Christ really look like? Come on. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Strike one says his head and his hairs were white like wood. Now when you look at this image, you see the name right here, says image of the beast. Cesar Borgia. This was a man that really wrote the earth. He was painted several times. Michelangelo painted him. Leonardo da Vinci, they all painted him. They all painted these different images of Cesar Borgia and gave him the and gave him the life of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why this is pushed all over the earth. Because they literally set him up as the new renaissance image of Jesus Christ. Right. During the dark ages, when the uh, when we ruled the Roman the, the, uh, 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 the Roman Empire, when we ruled in Europe, it was black men that ruled Europe first. Yep. The Byzantine Empire, those were your people. The Moors, right. those were your people that they conquered. Right. But when they conquered us, they set up a new image of right. Jesus Christ. Read on. That's why it's snow. His head and his hands were well, white as snow. Come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Straight too, because his eyes blue. I'm standing behind the poster and I can see them blue eyes. Yeah. But that's been pushed all over the earth. Read on. And his feet. Now we're looking at his feet. Now this brother say he African. I can see his feet, but I know you ain't African. Are you an Israelite? If you say you're an African, you're not an African. You're an Israelite. On this sign right here, you are from the tribe of Judah. It says, and his feet. I'm looking at your feet. Your feet, they're the same, about the same color as your legs. Your legs about the same color as your hands. Your hands, they the same color as your face, right? Right? What are you about? Yeah, I'm talking to both of y'all, right? Of course. I'm, I mean, that's just, that's common sense, ain't it? So now John is seeing Christ's feet. He says, and his feet like unto fine brass. They look like fine brass. Now what color is brass? What color is a penny? What color is a penny? Brown. Brown. That's what color brass is. It says, in his feet, like unto fine brass, come on. As if they burned in a furnace. Now, if you take brass and you burn it, what color does it turn? It's going to be dark, dark brown. That's right. It's going to be so dark, it might.
might be looking a, 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 a ghost color shade to black. Right. So if Christ was a dark, dark brown man, who in the hell is this that's pushed all across the earth? Jeez. This is the image of the beast. Right. It's the image of the so-called white right man because he set up satellites in our minds and in our brains so that anytime we say Jesus, anytime we think of Jesus, his little white image come up with his little two little fingers just pointing like he, I am the son of God. Now, when you go to your brother and you tell your brother, look, there's something wrong. We got to change something about our community. We got we, we to gotta come out of this oppression. Right. As soon as you bring up the Bible, you're like, man, I ain't starting no Bible. Because you know who pops up with the Bible? This. This image pops up in his brain. That's why they got movies like Passion of Christ, right. the Son of God. Right. Uh, Moses leading the child, the Ten Commandments. Everybody is white. Bring it out. How you gonna be the Egyptians and the Israelites? Bring it out. He was the Egyptians, the Israelites, the Canaanites. He didn't see Esau. Yeah, he everybody. Bring it out. Why? Because we don't want you to see no color. No. Don't ask your auntie or grandma or somebody, what color is Christ? They're gonna say, oh, he ain't got no color. Well, we're reading about color all in the Bible. Give me that in Daniel. We read about color all in the Bible. But our people will say, color and color don't matter. Well, obviously it matter if they change the image. Hold that. Give me Maccabees uh, 348. 348. I'm going to show you. Obviously color mattered. Color mattered so much. They said, hold on. We cannot let these black people see an image that looked like them and call him Jesus Christ. The only man on the earth that we, uh, 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 that we determine time by. We determine time before his death by this man and we determine time after his death by the name of this man. We cannot let him be a black man. Right. This is what has been set up on the earth. Why? Because in seeing Christ in you, in seeing Christ in you, and seeing Christ in all these brothers right here, you know what I'm gonna think in my head? Come on, man. Christ comes, we, we're the greatest people on the earth. That's right. The Son of God is from our people. Right. But we don't see that. And they don't want you to see that. So they push the white image of Christ. Right. But I'm gonna show you this. Read. First Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. And they open the book of the law. This is the book of the law. They got these images and the things that they do for child people out of the book of the law. They laid open the book of the law. Wherein? The heathen. Wherein what? The heathen. God calls all other nations that are not on the sun. The so-called white man, the so-called Chinese man, the so-called Arab man, the so-called Japanese man. God calls them heathens. If you are not of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, God refers to you as a heathen. But they made us think that we the heathens. Right. They told us that we were uncivilized in Africa swinging on trees and that they brought us here to civilize us. Right. Now, white right, man, we civilized you. That's we taught right. you how to farm when you came to America. Right. We taught you how to grow rice. We right. taught you how to grow corn. Right. We taught you how to hunt. Right. We ran you into the caucus mountain and then brought you back out and civilized you. You did not civilize the so-called black man. That's right. Hold on. Where in the heathen? Where in who? The heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. They sought to paint the likeness of their images in our book. So what you need to do, bro, if this is bearing witness with your spirit, if you understand, if you really understand that this it's time to make change, that the only thing, the only thing that's gonna affect change is by you changing you first. Right. See, you can't change the people out there if you don't change you first. You know? They're not going to follow you if they don't see you change. Right. When they see you change, then they'll change. Right. When, they see you, when they see you make an effort to be better, to better your community, to better your family, to better your nation, then that's what they're going to do. They're going to say, you know what? Something going on with this brother. He's fixing himself. He's fixing the community. I'm going to fix myself too. I'm going to teach my daughter how to fix herself. I'm going to teach my son how to fix herself. What? Myself. So you need to call us. We go, what's your name? Olin. Olin, I'm going to be looking for your call, Olin. What's your name? My name is Kalaya. Officer Kalaya. Good to meet you. Now, brother, because you got to go. But I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to deal with you. What part of Africa are you from? East Africa. East Africa. What's the, what, what is the uh, condition of your people in East Africa? Poor. Starving, trying to get a, a green card to come to America. That's what they do, honey. Yeah. So guess what? When you look on the sign, do you see yourself? Because a lot of people say, "Well, I don't see myself on the sign. I wasn't born in America." 
But see, what you got to, what we got to understand is that the reason why this sign is said like this, and you notice at the bottom it should say, and scattered abroad, because we were brought from the uh, west coast of Africa. Right. We were brought from there to America. You our brother. Right. You definitely our brother. I see, I see Jacob. I'm looking at Jacob. Right. You are up to see the Jacob. So what you gotta do? If you, did this happen to your people? You see that? Did this happen to your people, or did your people do this to the other people? Which one? This happened to your people. This, that means that you are of the seed of Jacob. Let me read chapter 28, verse 68. I'm going to show you. Because a lot of people would discard the brother and say, Oh, you, you from Africa or you ain't in our people? Oh, that's a lie. You are of our people. You from the same bloodline that we come from. Right. It's just that you, your uh, uh, parents and parents' parents, they probably wasn't brought here on slave ships. Or... Or they were brought here on slave ships, and then after slavery, when they sent some of our people back, your people went, your, your parents, grandparents, whoever, went back to the continent and ended up over there. Either way, if this happened to your people, you an Israelite according to God. That's right. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Yeah. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Did your people go into slavery on ships? Yes, God said, because Egypt just means bondage. Egypt means slavery. It says, and God said, what? And God shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. It says he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. So we got to understand what Egypt, where, where is Egypt? Right. That's the top part of Africa, right? So this ain't just, this, this, this ain't fairy tale or make believe. This is talking about a land mass that exists. But see, it was divided by that so-called white man. They put that Suez Canal in there. They built that. They put that in there. Right. Now it's divided, and we look at it like, well, this is East Africa, and this is West. Nah. It's one continent. Right. It's one continent. Right. But let's find out what Egypt is. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. So God calls Egypt the house of bondage. Now go back to, yep, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Egypt, notice it says again, a second time. He's going to bring the children of Israel into Egypt or into slavery a second time. Did they go into slavery the first time on a ship? No, they walked into Egypt. Because it was one landmass, it, no, it wasn't no canal there. They walked into Egypt. So if they need a boat or a ship to go into Egypt again a second time, that means it's not talking about that same landmass. That landmass that is being spoken of right now is right here on this continent here, America. You would go into bondage again. You would dock in Charleston, South Carolina at the slave port and be sold for $200, $600. Right. You would be shipped from, from Charleston to Virginia, right. from right. Virginia to, 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 to Memphis, from right. Memphis to Mississippi. Right. This is what happened to us. We were bought and sold, but we don't. By the way, where have I spake unto thee? Moses said, just like I'm telling you it's going to happen, that's how it's going to happen. Come on. Thou shalt see it no more again. The it, your homeland. You're not going to see your homeland again. Most people say, we say, what's the homeland? People say what? When you ask, when people are asked or talk about the homeland or the motherland, what do they say? They say Africa. Especially in America, you ask anybody, hey, what's the motherland? First thing they go say is Africa the motherland. But Africa is, is not the, we're going to see why they say that. We're going to see why God says that. We. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above is free. Which is the mother of us all? Jerusalem is what? Which is the mother of us all? So if Jerusalem is the mother of us all, where is Jerusalem? When you are Africa, you're, at, you, you're in Africa, boom. Africa's right here, you got Egypt, you know, all these little places. Where is Jerusalem? It's in the top part of the same continent called Africa. Same landmass. So when we say we're from the that Africa is the motherland, we ain't totally wrong. But what part? Where at? We're taught. We it says that Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the mother of everybody that's on the earth. That's where it started at. 
that's where we begin. That's 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 where we, our roots go back to. So when you say that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, you're saying that you are of the same lineage as Jesus Christ. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.